I recognize now Dr. Kerry A. Emanuel, professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, for his testimony. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman Hall and uh, Ranking Member Johnson, for this opportunity to speak to the integrity of the field of climate research. The basic physics of climate were established more than 100 years ago by distinguished scientists uh, such as Jean-Baptiste Foyer, Jean Tyndall. In particular, they established that our planet is habitable thanks to gases that comprise less than 3% of our atmosphere. Already in 1897, the Swedish chemist Svante Arrhenius projected that fossil fuel combustion would increase carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere and estimated by hand that doubling CO2 would increase surface temperatures by between 5 and 6 degrees centigrade. Analysis of paleoclimate records suggests that natural climate change is caused by variations in solar output, the Earth's orbit around the sun, aerosols, and in greenhouse gases. In particular, elevated greenhouse gases are the primary suspect in explaining the very warm climates of some of the Earth's past. The scientific basis for the existence of significant risks from anthropogenic climate change is solid and rests on the principles of physics established more than a century ago, as well as on records of the Earth's climate as recorded by instruments and in the geological record. The conclusions of the scientific community that warming of the climate system is unequivocal and that most of the observed increase in global temperatures since the mid-20th century is very likely due to the observed increase in greenhouse gas rests on sound scientific research. I need not review for you the fact that virtually every major scientific organization that deals with climate around the world has issued strong statements warning of the risks of climate change. Many government agencies and private enterprises are taking the risks of climate change quite seriously. For example, our own Defense Department has recently issued a report expressing concern about political instability arising from water and food shortages in several locations around the globe. Historically, science, including climate scientists, have tended to be conservative and to underestimate risk. I could give you many examples, but a recent and tragic example is the earthquake and tsunami in Japan uh, caused by a magnitude 9 earthquake. The best uh, projections before the earthquake of the largest earthquake that that region should experience was 8.3, many, many times lower than what was observed. Notwithstanding anything I've just told you, there is universal agreement among scientists that current assessments of the risk of climate change are highly uncertain. In my view, it is unlikely that these uncertainties will decline appreciably over the next decade. Because of this uncertainty, there is no scientific basis for the confidence expressed by some that the effects of climate change will be benign. In respect to the stolen emails, and I know something about that, Mr. Chairman, because I served on the scientific advisory panel put together by the Royal Society in England to investigate such allegations. While there's general agreement that the preparation of a particular graph by a few scientists shows poor judgment in omitting a part of the record that was demonstrably false, there is no evidence for an intent to deceive. Efforts by some to leverage this into a sweeping condemnation of a whole scholarly endeavor should be seen for what they are. Now, all scientific endeavors entail some diversity of views, including mavericks who challenge accepted science. There are biomedical researchers who do not think that HIV causes AIDS. Still surprisingly, recently, there were geologists who thought that the theory of plate tectonics is incorrect. While usually wrong, such mavericks are indispensable to the progress of science, forcing others to constantly test their assumptions, evidence, and results. But politicians who make mascots out of mavericks are invariably engaging in advocacy. They are fond of saying that science is not done by consensus. This is true, but if policy is not formulated on the basis of a sound scientific consensus, then it is almost certainly based on political considerations. Dealing with risks entailed in climate change will be extraordinarily difficult, and reasonable people will differ 
on questions of strategy. But citizens expect their representatives to confront this issue in an open and honest way. Making mascots of scientific mavericks or shooting the messengers are not rational options. Nations that are first off the mark in developing new technologies and policies that address the risks, selling those technologies to rapidly developing countries will prosper. Now let me finish by speaking to you more as a citizen than as a scientist. We properly revere our forefathers for making material and mortal sacrifices for our benefit. Uh, one only hopes that our descendants will hold us in similar regard. Thank you. <laughs>